and this honor that I, 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 I don't understand why Ed picked me to do this, quite frankly. I think he, he believes that if I can uh, talk convincingly in a surgeon's lounge, that somehow I have some gift to speak to people at large about these sorts of things. Um, it's an honor, and, and we've honored a lot of very important people tonight, but uh, one group among us has gone unhonored, and I, I would feel very remiss if I didn't remember them. This is a group of people from whom uh, the first school of virtue, we're talking about virtue tonight, we're talking about the virtues that are going to restore our country, and the first school of virtue in every one of our lives is our mothers. And I want to make a special point of thanking the mothers in this room who raise the soldiers, the airmen, the sailors, the Marines, the Supreme Court judges, the people willing to give up their lives to run for office to help us in this struggle. And it's about virtue, and it's about the source of virtue. And it's no accident that our salvation came into the world through the agency of a mother. He didn't do anything by accident. So let's remember mothers in this, in this time. And we're living in very amazing and perilous times. I never in my life dreamed that I'd be in northern Alabama giving a political speech. Never in my wildest dreams. I thought that I pretty much exhausted all the things that I was obliged to do as an American. I, I distinctly remember in, in 1986, 85, flying in a Marine Corps jet over the Sea of Japan, looking for Soviet bombers, and thinking to myself, I've, I'm fulfilling my duty, and I can go home and feel accomplished that I've done my part. And I remember about uh, oh, maybe eight years ago, maybe longer, nine years ago, when I was a surgeon at the Portsmouth Naval Hospital, and uh, I remember having a sense of satisfaction after we finished reconstructing the legs on those very noble sailors who were aboard the USS Cole that was attacked while she was laying peacefully at anchor in the Middle East. And I thought to myself, well, now I can retire having done something of value to the country. How little I knew. How comparatively meager those things are. And there are men and women in this room who have done far more than that. And, but what we have ahead of us is far greater than all that. Uh, because the war has come home. Again, I, I never expected to be giving a political speech. But about a year, well, actually, I'll take it back to, night, to 2008. My wife Patrice and I were in Chicago. We were there for a convention of plastic and reconstructive surgeons. It just happened that that was election night. And it just happened that our hotel was across the street from Obama's headquarters. And right around the corner from Centennial Park. I didn't imagine. I, I suspected that bad times were coming. I did not imagine. I did not imagine. And a year later, looking down the, down the, the road at what was happening with health care, I thought, we've got to do something about it. So I started educating myself about how we got in this fix called the health care crisis. And what I discovered was that our health care crisis was entirely manufactured. Yeah. Completely yeah. from start to finish. Healthcare that is wrong right now is wrong because the federal government got into it. Not only, not only has federal involvement in healthcare corrupted pricing, but it is corrupting our ethics. It is corrupting every one of us. Every one of us, when we sort of connive to figure out how we can work our insurance to get something that's maybe not in our policy or connive to write our billing in such a way that maybe I can collect because I feel cheated by Medicare. There's conniving. Federal socialism makes criminals out of us. The tax code that was so brilliantly discussed previously. The tax code makes criminals out of us. Who can understand it? I thought that what we could do is work for a local solution. I know that the problem is because we send all our problems to Washington. We have been convinced by years of education that if there's something wrong, it deserves to go to Washington. And that is the problem. We've been sending too much to Washington. I made up my mind. I made up 
right mind to apply those basic principles of Christian living that if you want to solve a problem, own it and solve it locally. And I thought, here's what we got to do. Alabama is a great state. I moved here because Alabama is a great state. My wife, my wife Patrice, a fellow naval officer, thank you United States Navy for issuing me the greatest woman in the world. She and I, she and I and our six children came to Alabama because I was retiring. I thought my, my work is done for America. I'm gonna, we're going to finish raising six kids. We're going to settle down and we're going to raise our six kids to know, love, and serve the Lord. What better place than Alabama? Yeah. And here we are. And I thought there's no better state in the Union. There's no better state in the Union to apply these principles of local solutions. And I thought, here we go. I didn't think I'd be giving speeches. I didn't think I'd be doing websites or, or, or YouTube videos, but off it went. And by and by, things started to happen. And we got to the point where we had a Senate Bill 233 that you people, burning up the phone lines, got out of committee and got out for a vote and it got out of the Senate. And it went to the House and we were betrayed. We were soundly betrayed by people sworn to service. And what has that betrayal accomplished? Health care is adding 31 million people to the insured roles. That's what we've been told. What few people seem to understand is all 31 million of them are being added to state Medicaid roles. Alabama Medicaid is bankrupt by the end of April. There's no money in it to take care of anyone in May and on to the end of the year. And you're going to add people to those roles. It's just not going to happen. So by betraying us in the House, what they've essentially done is handed the keys to the State House of Alabama to the federal government. This is why Arnold Schwarzenegger went from Sacramento to the White House. He went to beg for federal relief. He went hat in hand to the Oval Office to beg for the federal government to take over and bail out an entire state. A state that used to be the sixth largest economy in the world. And they are broke precisely because of Medicaid. It's a takeover. It's a takeover of our state governments, and, and it is reaching right down into our households. We have ample reason to be angry, obviously. You can hear it in my voice. And, and as I was preparing, I, I tell you, I wrote and rewrote and rewrote this speech countless times this week. And I, and I arrived not knowing what I'd talk about. Uh, but I decided that uh, you all are here because you understand the problem. And I don't need to explain the problem to you. I came ready to, to give an angry speech. I came ready with cell phone numbers of the people in Montgomery who betrayed us. We have a lot of personal interest in this. Each one of us has a stake in this. We have great financial stakes in this. We've all been sort of looking into the future thinking, how are we going to spend our retired years? How are we going to spend our time of leisure once our work is done? It's getting pretty obvious that that kind of thinking is folly, isn't it? It's folly. And it doesn't matter how well planned your life was. It's changed. It's changed radically. As all of the presenters tonight, I, I, I don't know how to compete, particularly with the last singers. How do you compete with that? How do you compete with that kind of, of heartfelt thanksgiving, that heart of gratitude for the liberty that we enjoy, the liberty upon which our nation was founded. I thought I'd done my part for that liberty, and as I said, I, I discovered that that's not the case. Our forefathers, our founders, began by fighting for policy. They began by fighting with the King of England about policy, about taxation, about representation, about commerce about who could manufacture goods and who could not manufacture goods. Any of this sound familiar? Yeah. They began with arguments about policy, but it wasn't long before they realized that really what it's about is it's about ideas. It's about the truth. And they began not with the gift of liberty, but with the greater gift of knowing where that liberty comes from. 
knowing who the author